I don't know what the fuck we just saw. The show just went off the air, and I'm very pissed off, and I'm going to struggle to maintain my composure because I don't understand what the fuck is going on at the WWE. I'm Nick Nightmare. Welcome to the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. This is the Survivor Series Review. And boy, am I angry. Let's get into it. I'm going to start everything off here by saying very simply that if Vince McMahon okayed this ending to the Survivor Series and he truly was the creative mind behind this, it's time to hang it up, pal. It's time to go. Saturday night we were treated to an amazing NXT show that is being run and produced by people who know what they're doing. Mostly... Triple H and I think it's time to hand the reins over to the next generation even if it's not Triple H anything is better than this what we got tonight was a fucking joke it in one fell swoop has killed many things including my love for the Survivor Series pay-per-view every Survivor Series style match that we had tonight it didn't feel like Survivor Series. There was all kinds of stupidity going on. Weird bookings of all of them. Like the elimination orders were real, uh, like awkward is I guess the word I would use. It just had no flow. The winners uh, didn't make sense. The way they won, you know, it, every single one of them was just like, eh, it didn't do it. It didn't do it for me. The men's match was good, you know, very entertaining, but again, the order of eliminations didn't make sense. We all knew that it was going to come down to what it came down to. I'm not going to jump all over the place right at the beginning. We'll get to that later on when we get to the men's match. I'm just so pissed off. And we're going to start off with the main event. The mega match that they've been hyping for months now. Brock Lesnar and Bill Goldberg. And, um, god damn it. What the fuck did they do here? We have just witnessed the rise of Brock Lesnar. Over the last five years. This is the man that we've said many times on this podcast. And I'm sure you'll hear everywhere else. Has broken The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. That is like a holy grail. A sacred title to hold. And since he's captured that. Nobody has been able. To knock Brock Lesnar off his pedestal. And nobody should have. There's nobody of that caliber. To be able to. Take down the beast. And um, we were all hoping for somebody to be built up and fit into that position. Somebody new. I mean, maybe not new to us as educated wrestling fans, but somebody like a Samoa Joe or a Shinsuke Nakamura. Those are two of the more believable names you could throw in the ring and could give Brock Lesnar a run for his money. Look at what they did at NXT on Saturday night at TakeOver Toronto. You can't watch that match and tell me either one of those guys wouldn't stand a chance against Brock Lesnar. You could easily believe that they would beat him. Believing that a 50-year-old retired father now who has not competed in active competition in the ring or any other form. He wasn't in MMA. He's never showed up in TNA. He has not wrestled in over a decade. And it was obvious last week on Raw when he was blown up so quickly just by tossing around some developmental talent dressed up as security guards. And he was huffing and puffing like a big bloated dragon. And this man, who's a WCW relic. I mean, he had his stint in the WWE, but this is a man from WCW. 
a Stone Cold Steve Austin knockoff, per se, even though they claim that's not where they were going. Anybody who watched the Attitude Era knows that Bill Goldberg was a poor man Steve Austin. And um, you either loved him or you hated him. There was no in-between. And I was never a big Bill Goldberg guy. I just saw right through him. And I continue to see right through him. And he's getting paid big money. And he came in here as an advertisement piece to sell this video game. And ends up walking out with the beast under his boot. Are you fucking kidding me? In a minute and 29 seconds. Bill Goldberg defeats Brock Lesnar? Are you fucking kidding me with this? There is so much wrong with this that it, obviously, you can hear my frustration. It shuts down my brain because it makes me so furious that they are so clueless that they don't even realize what they've just done. And I go on Twitter, you know, and I see guys like Bubba Ray Dudley and uh, the Hurricane Shane Helms standing there defending this booking saying, oh, well, you're not seeing the big picture. And I say, fuck your picture. Because the big picture started being drawn five years ago when you brought in Brock Lesnar. And you shocked the world by making him beat The Undertaker. And gave him almost the keys to the kingdom. And he had a great title run. And he's been squashing talent for the last five years. And rightfully so, because he's a two-time UFC champion. He's a multi-time WWE champion. He's a legit badass. He is Brock Lesnar. He is the beast incarnate. Eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. That's what he fucking does. That's what he's done since he's been back. And you gave it all away. For Bill Goldberg? Are you fucking kidding me? I can't. I can't even continue to talk about this. We're going to move on because obviously you know I'm upset. I want to know if you're upset. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit and mash that thumbs up down below that like button. This show started off with the women's match, which again, everything that happened here, once the entrances were over, just didn't make sense. You had Alicia Fox, who doesn't wrestle and has only been on TV to get destroyed by Nia Jax, get a pinfall on Carmella, who's been actively... Rising the ranks of SmackDown. And is a very good in-ring competitor. And just completely within minutes, boom, gone. Carmella, done. Then we had Alicia Fox immediately eliminated. So obviously, from the outside looking in, they took the two least experienced women immediately out of the match. This whole match just lost its luster when Nikki Bella was uh, Tanya harding in the back by somebody, wink, wink. Natalia standing right there. We all know it's going to be Natty. If it's not, I would be shocked. But they're obviously not that creative enough to come up with something different and new. So Nikki Bella's out of the match. And this is obvious to me because they can't have Nikki Bella be part of a losing team. She's been, you know, fantastic as of late. And she's been losing to Carmella on SmackDown. But... You know, this is too big to have her be part of. You know, we can't have her looking bad. Who's going to pin Nikki Bella on Team Raw? God forbid we get to see Nikki Bella in the ring with Charlotte or Sasha Banks. God forbid we get to see her stand toe-to-toe with Nia Jax because we might need her to lose. Why couldn't you have done a double countout? Just have her fight with somebody outside the ring, a double elimination, make the girls both look good because they're not giving up. She didn't get pinned. You know, some kind of a brawl, a double disqualification, something. You could have been much more creative than let's substitute Natalia in there because she's from from, from Canada and Toronto will pop for her. Who cares, man? At this point, you ruined that right right from the outset. And then the order of eliminations were just off. Like I said earlier, it just, this flow of this match just... Wasn't cool. Uh, Naomi gets counted out after a very weird spot with Nia Jax. I think she was supposed to choke slam her off the apron to the concrete floor, but it just looked like she kind of drew her. And, you know, it didn't look like she would be knocked out for a 10 count 
after said move. But, you know, whatever. We're not going to nitpick. And I'm not going to go move for move here with this review. We're going to do the essence of the show, which is that this sucked. Really just sucked. Just from beginning to end. The women's match was slow and the pace was just dreadful. We had a few decent spots. You know, Nia Jax looked good in the ring. We had one spot where Becky and Alexa tried to both try to suplex Nia Jax simultaneously and she reversed it only to suplex the two of them. Fantastic. Like we had some really good spots there, but it wasn't worth what we seen. And in the end, Charlotte and Bailey stand tall for Raw. Yes, Charlotte and Bailey. And Bailey got the pin, eliminating Becky Lynch. It just nothing made sense here. Only to have Charlotte end up beating up Bailey when the bell rang at the end. To set up their next, what they're going to do next, which is obviously Charlotte versus Bailey for the Raw title. Which is coming too soon. Unless they're going to put it on Bailey and then start leading into Bailey versus Sasha for WrestleMania. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do anymore. I've totally lost sync with the WWE. After the women's match, we had the Intercontinental title match, which, again, we had this match really started things to get going. I was like, all right, maybe we're headed in the right direction. We had some really good action between Sammy and The Miz. Fantastic wrestling, almost on par with what he's been doing with Dolph Ziggler as of late. But then again, at the end, the, the trickery and Maurice ringing the bell, Sammy thinks he's won, only to get rolled up. And pinned like a little bitch. The Intercontinental title, uh, Intercontinental title stays on SmackDown, which I'm glad about. But there's no reason why they couldn't have done this with Dolph Ziggler. They could have come up with a different finish. There's no reason to have The Miz be the substitute here. What, to do a heel finish? Cause, why, because Dolph don't have a manager to ring the bell? You could have came up with something else. And Dolph Ziggler now wasn't even on the show at all. So I need to look into that and see what's going on with that. And if I find out anything, you know, I will be here to tell you guys about it. Because him being off the show, Rusev not being on the show at all, like, it's just surprising to me. In the end, The Miz retains the title, stays on SmackDown. After this, if I'm going out of order again, I apologize. But after this, I believe, was the tag match. The 10 on 10 tag match. This was a fucking waste of time. The whole entire match. Right from the entrances all the way through. I didn't care at all about any of it. And I almost was going to get into it because right off the bat, the comic relief was eliminated. You had Brizongo and The New Day both go out within like the first two minutes of the match, which was both surprising and angering. Like, I didn't understand why they would do that. And how much better would the SmackDown team have looked with the Ascension on it? Like, did we really need the hype, bros? Did we really need Brizongo there? I'm a big fan of Brizongo. But if they're going to come out as the fashion police and get swallowed up in 30 seconds, I don't want to fucking see it. I want to see you be the fashion police, be jerks, and then go out there and tear it down. Because they can. They have the ability to do that. I don't know why they're not allowed to. <sighs> But that's another frustrating episode for another day. Again, this match just went on and on and on. It was dreadful until it got down to the nitty gritty and we were left with the last two teams, which were the Usos and Cesaro and Sheamus. Now this is where it got very good. A lot of back and forth, a lot of false finishes. Very exciting. I wasn't sure who was going to win. I thought for sure that the Usos would win. But they didn't. And the ultimate surviving team of this match is the one team in the match that hasn't been a tag team for more than three months. What a surprise. I cannot get behind them winning this match. Cesaro and Sheamus should have been the first team eliminated. Because they don't even get along. They should not have won this match. I don't get it. Nothing on this night made any fucking sense. We had the cruiserweight match. And Brian Kendrick 
Very nice promo. Very good work by the package team, as always. The little video packages told these stories better than they've looked in the last few weeks. If you actually watch the show like we do, you know that it hasn't felt as good as they make it look in the lead up right before the match. These the promo p- packages, the videos with the music and the comments and the way they cut it, it just makes everything look really compelling even though we know that it's been an, a fucking absolute shit show. And this continues with this cruiserweight match. Again, some good action. They crowd not really into it at first, but then they finally pulled them in. Brian Kendrick at one point would go up to the top rope and do a reverse headlock takeover from the top rope and land it into the captain's hook. Beautifully done. Very well done. But, again, the finish of this match was just retarded. For no reason, Baron Corbin comes out and gets involved in this match attacking everybody because why because you fell on the apron you fell you left the match and fell yourself and you're gonna come out now and take it out on Kalisto because he's the one you were fighting at the time come on man this whole thing stunk and now the cruiserweight division is not going to smackdown the where it should be it doesn't make sense the only thing I could see happening is that they'll get their own division because 205 Live needs the cruiserweights and they're being taped after the SmackDown show. I I don't know. It's confusing. My brain hurts just thinking about it. it this whole night fucking sucked, guys. I can't even wrap my head around how bad this is. They just treat us like we're stupid. You know, they have n- absolutely no respect for the fans. There is not one thing that went right even in the case of the men's match the men's five on five match was terrible as far as elimination goes the action was good but the way they booked the story of the match made no sense anybody going into this would have bet money that Roman Reigns was going to be the last man standing for team raw and you would have been a sure bet because that's exactly what happened Kevin Owens gets disqualified I I wanted to turn off the show at that point. When Kevin Owens, the Universal Champion, is not going to be standing tall at the end of this match, I don't want to know about it. They make him look like a fucking joke. Roman Reigns is the most important thing they have on the show. He's the United States Champion, not the Universal Champion, but he was the one being left to look the best as far as the representatives from Raw. And thank God for the Toronto crowd, because they're the only reason why I enjoyed this show at all. With the constant 10 chants, every time there was any kind of count going on, whether the ref was counting somebody out of the ring, or counting somebody for holding a a submission too long, or being outside the ropes, or all those reasons the ref will count to 5 or to 10, all you heard was the crowd going, 10, 10, 10. And that's a testament to Ty Dillinger and NXT and everything that they did the night before. Because that was fucking wrestling. That was amazing. And I knew better than to even expect something good from this show. But like I say, we try to maintain the power of positivity on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. And sometimes it bites us in the ass, as it did tonight. This men's match had its moments. Most memorable to me is when Braun Strowman tosses James Ellsworth off the Raw announce stage into a pile of tables. Very impressive. But I wasn't invested in it because they were trying to make Braun Strowman look too dominant in this match. And, you know, you could just hear Vince McMahon jerking off in the back at the possibilities of Braun Strowman looking so great and Roman Reigns is going to be so great. But throughout the whole match, the crowd was all over him. It was all over Roman Reigns. Every time he was down on the floor, Roman sleeping, they would chant, Roman sucks, the booze, constant, anytime he threw any kind of move. And if he would have won this match, oh my God, they might have just booed the house right down. They might have been so loud and so mad 
that they just might have shook loose the foundation of the Air Canada Center because this crowd was hot and they were letting everybody know about it. The one moment of this match that really set itself apart from everything else is... Again, I'm sorry I'm jumping all over, but uh, I need to preface this by saying Dean Ambrose was eliminated very early in this match. And he goes off into the back. Okay? Eliminated. Gone. He would come out again later only to beat up AJ Styles and fuck everything up for Team SmackDown. Or so it would seem. And the coolest moment of this match was the little mini Shield reunion, which we all kind of knew was going to happen at some point. But security was trying to get rid of Ambrose. Roman and Rollins take out the security. Then the three of them shield the triple power bomb through the Spanish announce table to AJ Styles, throws him in the ring, gets him eliminated. And then Seth Rollins would in turn get eliminated and leaving Roman Reigns standing alone against Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. And I thought for sure this was it and Roman was going to win it all and they were going to really ruin it even worse. But thankfully they came to their senses. And that didn't happen. Randy Orton would throw Bray Wyatt out of the way of a Roman Reigns spear. Taking the impact for him. Allowing for the moment to come for Bray to scoop him up. Hit him with a sister Abigail. One, two, three. Roman Reigns takes the pin. Bray Wyatt. Randy Orton. Wyatt family. Get the win for Team SmackDown. In the biggest of the three matches. Even though Raw took two Of the three bouts. Then after that was the disgusting display. Of Brock Lesnar and Bill Goldberg. The man's entrance was longer than the match. And I know what some of you guys are going to say. Well that's Bill Goldberg. You know back in the day that was his thing. Yeah. But you know when he came out to the ring. He was wrestling Billy Dipshit. Or Johnny Go Fuck Yourself. Because they didn't have anybody for him to wrestle. Who did he fight? Hugh Morris? Get the fuck out of here. Nobody cared about him. Bill DeMott. I'm sorry, buddy, but nobody cared about you back then. You were a jerk-off. And you were fed to Bill Goldberg. Who cares? There were a lot of people fed to Bill Goldberg. And yeah, okay, Hulk Hogan lost to Bill Goldberg in a minute, there's seconds. That's his gimmick. That's his thing. That's what you do. But this is Brock motherfucking Lesnar. (sighs) I don't want to get back into it. I'm trying to keep my blood pressure at at a sustainable level so that I don't explode and overload my microphone and my brain. And I don't want to have a stroke. So I think we're going to call it a day on this review because I don't want to talk about it anymore. It was... Just fucking disgusting. As a wrestling fan, it makes me absolutely just disappointed in the product, disappointed in the people running the place, disappointed in Brock for allowing this to happen. Like, I would have totally stuck it to my guns and been like, get out of here. Nobody is going to beat me in a minute and 30 seconds. Nobody. Like, even Samoa Joe or anybody else, whoever was going to beat Brock Lesnar... A minute and 30 seconds? Come on. No. Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn and all these creative goons and morons over there at WWE headquarters that are writing and producing this shit have got to go. And I don't mean go. I mean fucking go. Like now. You are killing the thing that I love. You destroyed... The Survivor Series tonight. You destroyed the legend of The Undertaker. You destroyed Brock Lesnar. You buried it all. For what? For 2K17? For a video game? For a returning 50 year old guy that's not even in the Hall of Fame that started out in WCW and wasn't even a Vince McMahon creation? As we've heard all these years that he doesn't put over people that he does not create. And now he's taken... Bill Goldberg, one of the biggest names he had nothing to do with, and then just totally squashed somebody he did have a stake in creating. I I don't get it. And I don't want to get it. And I don't even want to watch Raw tomorrow, to be honest with you. What the fuck are they going to show me that's going to make me care? It was a debacle. 
tonight. Absolutely terrible. I'm beyond words. And I want to thank you guys for being with me tonight for this. We will be here again later this week. Hopefully talking about SmackDown in a more positive light. Although I do have my issues with what they did tonight as well. Best thing that happened all weekend was NXT. And Wednesday night is going to be no different, man. This Wednesday on NXT, we're going to have the fallout from TakeOver. And I look forward to that more than anything else. Also, I'm going to be looking forward to Lucha Underground. Because these are the two companies. And NXT is, you know, it's under the WWE umbrella. But it's not a, it's not a Vince McMahon creation. It's not a Kevin Dunn production. It's a Triple H presentation. So the flag is completely different. And at this point, I'm with the yellow brand. Because they know what they're doing over there. It's heads and shoulders above every single thing they're doing at the WWE. NXT and Lucha Underground. The two best wrestling shows on all of television. Bar none. Bar none. New Japan's good. You know, I watch it on Fox Sports. But... A lot of it gets the same. When you watch a lot of it, it's kind of the same. You're kind of watching the same thing over and over again. And there's not a lot of storyline, not a lot of drama built up in between the matches. But it's a lot of wrestling, which I like. That's where I get a lot of my wrestling fix. I can watch these guys go out there and just strong style kick the shit out of each other. And it's a lot of fun. And, you know, TNA, we watch, you either watch it or you don't. I watch it. My wife hates it. I know a lot of you guys probably don't watch it either because it just has become kind of hard to watch. But, you know, they got Matt and Jeff over there and they're doing some great stuff. And it's way more worth my time than what I spent watching tonight. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm Nick Nightmare. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show Survivor Series Review. Please hit that like button. Don't forget to to subscribe if you have not already done so. Thank you guys so much for being here. For Blue, the snowball microphone, always here, making me sound tried and true. I want to thank you guys again. Have a good night. We'll see you later on this week for more stuff. Have a good one.